Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lakeville United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Ed, and I'm so, so glad to see you all here with us today. Before we begin, we do have just a few announcements to bring before the congregation. Our Advent study continues today at 10.30 a.m. and for two more Sundays. That is Prepare the Way, the way for the Lord by Adam Hamilton, led by me. And if you're like, Pastor Ed, I don't have a book. We have a few more copies that came in this week. They're on top of the mailboxes. So after service, feel free to run to the mailbox, grab your copy, or I'll have them over in the, uh, in the Sunday school classroom. I was excited. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Lions Club Blitz Day is Saturday, December 9th. That's here at LUMC from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mary Magdalene Mission Circle Meeting is at 7 p.m. Today? Um, Tuesday. Tuesday. 7 p.m. Tuesday. And meets at the church at 6 p.m. to share a ride. Community Christmas Party is today from 5 to 7. Live music from the Hillsiders. We do ask you, bring a dish to pass. It's going to be a potluck. And Santa Claus will be here. The Giving Tree. That's out in the narthex. The Children's Church kids are sponsoring our annual Giving Tree for the YWCA Women's Shelter. So go out to the tree, grab an ornament, and do we know when the items to be in by? So they will be delivered Sunday the 17th, so bring them in by Sunday the 17th. That's all we have. Do you have any announcements to bring before the congregation? Well, if not, then I invite you to rise your able body and spirit for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, on this first Sunday of Advent, as we prepare our hearts for the coming Christmas season, we pray you fill us with hope. The hope that your son has never abandoned us. He'll return to us, Lord. The hope that your justice, your love wins. Lord, prepare us to go out and share that hope this day, the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your name we pray, amen. I invite you to remain standing for our opening hymn, number 216, How a Rose Air Blooming.
Please remain standing for the scripture for the worship this morning. Come, people of faith, come join our hearts in worship. God is faithful and calls us into the loving presence of Jesus, who is the Christ. We come to join those who watch and wait and celebrate. Amen. You may be seated. As you see in your bulletins, Rita's supposed to be up here with me today, but she woke up with a cold this morning. The thing she does to avoid speaking in public. In the days of exile and uncertainty, the prophet Isaiah cried out, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, Lord, so the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. In the midst of our own encounters with uncertainty and upheaval and our longing for deliverance, Jesus calls to us, therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. We wait as people surprised again and again by God who shakes us out of our complacency and wakes us up to the work of the kingdom all around us. Today we light this candle as a sign of our shocking hope. May we stay awake to God's activity in the world as we wait in expectation that even now God is with us, working to restore us to the fullness of life with God and one another. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. At this time, I invite the kids to come forward to play Stump the Pastor. <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay, you guys all got something to stump me with? Okay. No, what? I only do one thing every sun, uh, every some pastor day. So we need someone to help. See Mr. Bill back there? He's smiling. Okay, go talk to Mr. Bill, and he's going to choose the item to stump me with, okay? Attempt to stump me with. Rule of thumb, if you make eye contact with me, I will call upon you. <laughs> okay. Okay, it seems like they've chosen something. Okay. Who got chosen? Alyssa, you did. Okay, let me try to figure out what this is first. That's a tube. I'm not supposed to take them out? And nothing was changed. Okay, I don't know what this is. What is it? A buck collar? Yeah. <laughs> Big white hunter. Huh? Like that? That that sounds like two bucks fighting. 
Okay. 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 So, buck collar. You use this to attract bucks, right? A deer. I would assume. Can I keep this for our next capital improvement campaign? <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be great. Okay. Go camping right now. Go camping right now. It's raining yeah. and cold. Okay, okay, okay. Just get in your car and drive all the way into nature. No. Drive all the way into nature? Yeah. We live in Lakeville. That's like a mile away. No. I went on the south of Okay. Coast. Wow, that's a lot of road trips. Okay, I got something. I got something. So, you use a buck collar, collar to call deer. You rub it together, and the deer go, hey, I know that guy, and they come and check it out. So, what this reminds me of, it reminds me of God. How? It's pretty simple. Did you know that God knows you by name? Yep. God knows you by name. And what's more, God just doesn't know you by name. God calls you by name. God is right now going, hey, Ricky, you want to know me better? God's saying, hey, Alyssa. Hey, Adriana. Do you want to know me better? Every day God's calling you. Because God loves you. God cares about you. God knows you completely. Does God know when you mess up? Yes. 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 Does God forgive you when you mess up? Yes. Yes. God knows all of them by name too. God calls Bill. God calls Larry. God calls Denny. And when they mess up, does God hate them? No. God says, you're forgiven because I love you. So, when I see this butt collar, I think of the fact that God is calling you, like this butt collar is, to come closer to God, to love God more, because God already loves you. God loves you completely. God loves animals. God loves animals. And horses and, and everybody. Can horses can talk. Look. Okay. <laughs> I think if you have to do that much work to make the horse talk, you can't. <laughs> That's fascinating, and I would love to check it out after service, okay? The question is where'd the horn go? I took it off. You whipped it off. Okay. It, <laughs> It's an unicorn, not a unicorn. Okay. Thank you, that one person that gave me a pity laugh. Thank you for that. So, that's what I think of when I see this buck collar. Okay? Want to stand up with me, Alyssa? Those who think Alyssa and her buck collar, 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 stump me, raise your hand. Okay, I'm not even going to get that other vote. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> on this special Sunday of Advent, apparently you win an extra dollar for ice cream. Okay? So, you guys want to pray with me? Yeah. After uh, I put my stuff down. After you put your stuff down, okay. Okay. What? That's three dollars. That's like four bucks. 
You have to explain how much money you just won. Shh. It should be. Wait. Wait a second. Okay. That was for the buck collar. No, no, that's what you normally win. I No. No. <laughs> okay. So, you guys want to close your eyes and pray with me? Okay. Hey, God. Thank you. Thank you for the laughs we've had here. Thank you for the love you showed us. Thank you for the fact that you know us by name. You know us completely. You know when we've made mistakes and you forgive us. You love us, Lord. And Lord, we pray we get to know you better every day. And Lord, these next four Sundays, as we prepare for Christmas, we pray we can be really ready for Christmas. That you fill us with excitement and hope, joy and love, so we can share the good news with everyone. Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys. Go follow Miss Judy, and she'll take you to Children's Church, okay? <laughs> At this time, I invite the ushers to come forward, collect our tithes and our offerings.
Lord God, we recognize that all that we have is a gift from you. In gratitude, we return these, our first fruits, our tithes, and our offerings. And Lord, we pray for a blessing be upon them so that they can help us continue to do the missions and ministries you've entrusted to our care. Lord, in your name we pray, now and always. Amen. You may be seated. As we enter into this time of prayer, I do invite you to lift up before God and before the congregation. Names starts to pray over this week and also God's sightings so that we as a church family can celebrate all that the Lord has done for us together. And if you're joining us from home, we do invite you to post on our Facebook wall or YouTube feed any prayer requests you may have. And if during the week you have a prayer request, I invite you to call myself or the church office and we'll put your name on the prayer board. Do you want to start by saying thank you and a God sign for all those who helped decorate the church this week? We had a great turnout to Hanging of the Greens. Thank you, the women's group who came and decorated the Christmas trees. And thank you, men who came out yesterday in all that nasty weather to put up the wise men and the nativity scene. So thank you all who made this church look so beautiful today. Martha. Prayers for the Jerry Leininger family. Uh, we prayed for Jerry last week, but he passed away during the week. And God siding in all the area farmers who helped get his crops in this week. So prayers for the Jerry Leininger family and prayers of Thanksgiving for the farmers in the area. Yeah. Continue prayers for Jim as he continues treatment for cancer. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, Lord, we come to you this day with the prayers upon our hearts. On this cold, dreary December morning, we remember that this is a Sunday of hope. That hope is not found in momentary things. No, this hope we have that can never be extinguished is in you, Lord. You who are eternal. You who always was and always will be. You who are always with us in the darkest valleys. <clears throat> Lord, you are the source of our hope. We pray we can remember that, Lord, not just today, but in all days. And Lord, we pray for our church family today. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, those here with us, those joining us digitally, those joining us in spirit. We pray for those who need your healing touch, who need your comforting presence. pray for those who need to be reminded of your love. And Lord, we pray you can use us as your instruments of that. That we can be the hands and feet of Jesus to each other. That we can show signs of your love to each other. That we can lift up each other, walk with each other, guide each other, work with each other. Not for our own glory, but for your glory, God. 
We pray that we, as United Meth- as Lakeville United Methodist Church, can continue to serve you. Serve you completely, Lord. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for those who are mourning today, mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of health, the loss of normal. We pray for our teachers and our students and faculties of our schools. We pray for those who are hurting those who those who are suffering pains we do not see because Lord you see all and we recognize that while this is a holly jolly time for many of us there are those brothers and sisters out in our community who are grieving and we pray your strength is upon them We lift them up in prayer and we pray we can walk with them too. So Lord, let us be with our neighbors. Let us be with our families and friends. Let us be a visible sign of your kingdom. And Lord, we pray for, we pray for our nation. We pray for our world. We pray for all the world's leaders. Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray for your peace to rule over the earth. We pray for your justice and your mercy. We pray for your love to wash away the hate. We pray for your children who are facing wars and rumors of wars or struggling in the face of disasters, man-made and natural. We pray for your children who are going out to care for your sheep. Lord, we do give you thanks this day. We give you thanks for each other. We give you thanks for the families and friends we have. We give you thanks for the roof over our heads. We give you thanks for the hope you've sprung in us. We give you thanks for the kind deeds and words, family and friends, neighbors and strangers. Most of all, God, we give you thanks for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to be with us, who died for us, was raised for us, who defeated the power of sin and death. And now, and it's in his name, we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and freely forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise this morning, if you're able, for the scripture reading this morning. It's taken from Mark 13, uh, verse 24 through 37. But in those days after that suffering, and the suffering was talked about just before this scripture reading, 
uh, Jesus was talking about the future of the world. And that's where that suffering comes in. After that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they would see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about the day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be, be put on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep alert. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The trees are up. The lights are bright. There's been snow. The altar on the nativity, the altar has the nativity scene up. Soon Santa will be loading up his sleigh and Christmas morning will be here. And I don't know about you, but I am so excited. I love this time of year. I love the music. I love the lights. I love the cheesy movies that all have the same plot. Every time we light the candle, I make a tally mark. One down, two, three, Christmas. Yet growing up, I always found the first Sunday lectionary reading to make no sense for Advent. Advent's this wonderful time. It's a joyous time. It's a time to celebrate and get ready. And instead of hearing about the Annunciation of Mary or Joseph, or instead of hearing a prophecy from Isaiah, we instead get, well, that. Apocalyptic. Ooh, dark. It's grim. This is the beginning of Christian year, the beginning of Christmas season. And here we start the end of it all. It's like beginning a movie, opening scene with a giant explosion. Unless your name is Michael Bay, you can't pull it off. You have to build up to it. But here we are. I gotta ask, why do we start here? Of all scripture we could choose, why do we start every Advent lectionary reading like this? Well, it's because Advent isn't here to prepare us for Christmas. I mean, it is, but it's not the Christmas we're thinking of. Advent, the four candles lighting, isn't here to prepare us for the holiday of Christmas where Santa loads up his sleigh and comes down the chimney and we give presents and we sing some carols and we open the tree and we go wassailing and we figure out what wassailing is. No, Advent 
is preparing us. Not for the holiday of Christmas, it's preparing us for the holy day of Christmas. The day we remember when Christ first came to us. And more importantly, we remember that Jesus promised us that he'll come back for us. Advent is a season for us to remember that all of this is not all that there is, that there is so much more. Advent is the time of year where we are reminded that Jesus will return and all that is wrong in the world will be made right. That while the world may seem scary and stressful and dark, Advent is the time where we remember there is light and that God's love wins in the end. That's why we begin here at the ending. It reminds us in four Sundays we celebrate that Christ came to us. In four Sundays we remember Christ is coming back for us. Are you ready? Are you ready for the second Christmas? That's the entire point of Christ's message today. Be ready because you never know when it will happen. Christ gives us a checklist. He does this in every gospel. He gives us a checklist of the signs of the times. You know them. Darkness, moon goes out, stars fall, there's wars and rumors of wars, all that fun stuff. And the church universal has been trying to interpret those signs for nearly 2,000 years. Go to the Barnes and Noble over in Mishawaka, go to the Christian section, and there will be about a bookcase of Bibles, a bookcase of Amish romance novels, and then about five bookcases that try to tell you how to predict the end times. There's shelves upon shelves of books that will tell you that Jesus will return because this person won the election back in 2008. Or this person became pope five popes ago. Or there was a comet in the sky. And friends, I don't know about you, but I get tired of hearing about all these apocalypses. Apocalypse, I, I don't know the plural. I myself have lived through at least two apocalypses. 2000 and 2012. Remember those? The world's supposed to end. The year 2000 didn't happen. The world's supposed to end December or something in 2012, and Jesus would come back because the Mayans predicted it. I never got understood why that became tied in with Jesus. I bet you remember different ones too. I bet you remember other apocalypses that you lived through. It's practically the church's universal's favorite pastime, which is odd when you see what Christ taught. Yes, he gives a description. He gives a description of what it will be like, but then he adds, no one's going to know when it comes. This is what it's going to be like, but not the angels in heaven know. I don't know. Jesus says, I don't know. Only God the Father knows. Yes, there will be signs of friends. It's above your pay grade to know. which for me is comforting. I find comfort in knowing that I don't know. Because that means it's not my job. And the thing I've been trying to be taught from an early age is if it's not my job, then I shouldn't be trying to do it. So why worry about it? Why worry? Because friends, also we need to remember, it's a joyous moment. It's a joyous moment. God's love wins. Justice prevails. Peace on earth and evil is defeated. It's something to long for. It's something to celebrate. Yeah, we don't know when it will happen. But friends, friends, we're to trust in God. That's the source of one of our hopes, our big hope. 
that in the end, no matter what happens, God will win. Evil in this world has lost already. It just doesn't know it yet. Hate has been defeated. It just doesn't know. Love prevails. Justice defeats injustice. Eternal God rules. The kingdom will come. That's the hope there, my friends. The hope that God's love prevails. The hope that Christ has not left us orphans. That we are not abandoned. That we will be brought into glory. That is a powerful lesson to remember in a world that tells us to be cynical. A world that tells us that cynicism is wisdom and optimism is foolishness. Christ tells us the truth. Hope is not foolish. Hope is not a lie. Hope is the truth. Friends, we're called to live into that hope. Live into the hope of Christ. That hope has kept the church going for over 2,000 years. That no matter how bad things may seem, with hate seeming to run a rampant, that they will never defeat the love of God. That the actions of the church to grow the kingdom of, the hope of God here on earth will never be in vain. That even when we are confronted with hatred and ugliness in the world, we know that the love and beauty of God will triumph. But even though we know the outcome, even though we know in the end God wins, doesn't mean we can be lazy. Christ calls us to be ready. To be ready. To be prepared. But what does that look like? It doesn't look like constantly looking for signs predicting things. No, we're told that's pointless. It's impossible. We can never know when Christ will return. No, trying to figure out when Christ will come back is not being prepared. Instead, to be prepared, we need, well, to be prepared. I think of it like this. Every week, I have a checklist of chores I should be doing during the week. Dishes, laundry, changing light bulbs, random things. I have it for the entire week. Do you know my most productive time during the week? The time of the week I get the most work done? Friday from 4 to 5.30. When I realize, oh shoot, Rita's on her way home. Suddenly, I'm getting dishes washed, I'm doing all the laundry, every light bulb's in change in this house. For that final hour and a half, I am working like the wind. I try to get a day's, a week's worth of work done in one hour. And friends, let me tell you, as hard as I work in that one hour, I don't succeed. I'll forget something, or I'll do it half-heartedly. And Rita will come home and say, did you do the dishes? And I said, yes, all the dishes are in the sink, ready to be washed. They're soaking. <laughs> it counts. But it's the same with our faith. The Savior gave us a job. Go out and transform the world. Go make disciples. Show other people how much God loves them. Love them as you love yourself. Love God with your whole body. Be Christ's hands and feet. That's a lot of work. That's a lot to do on your chore list. And friends, it's not something you can do last minute. We can't just be waiting for the signs of Christ to return and go, oh no, I better get all this stuff done before Jesus comes back. We can't live life like that. We can't wait till later years of our lives when we recognize that we'll be seeing Christ soon to try to get it all done. No, friends. If we're called to be prepared, that means we have to live every hour like it is 
Four o'clock on Friday, and you're Ed McCutcheon. That means you always have to be willing to do that work every day. It means every day you are ready to do what needs to be done. That you need to live every day prepared, ready to do your chores, ready to do your job. Because it is needed. Because what we're called to do, friends, is needed. And you don't need to tell me that. You, you don't need me to tell you that. You know the world needs Christ. You know the world needs love and justice, peace, joy. It's needed. And who's going to do it if we don't? And if Christ comes back in the next hour, if Christ comes back in the next 20 years, will he look at you and go, good job, faithful servant, or will you look at you and go, oh, wow, so you're just going to let those dishes soak, huh? You know that doesn't count. Christ has never left us. Christ is already in our hearts. But Christ has promised he'll come back to us in physical body and bring us home. But until then, until then, he's like the Lord of a manor who left the servants in charge. We're the servants, the church, and we have a job to do. To share God's love with all by acting like we love God. Acting like we love each other because we do. Today, friends, we lit the first candle Three more to go. Then it's Christmas. Three more until we remember that Christ comes again someday. And until that glorious day, let us remember. Let us remember that Christ never abandoned us, that we have hope. We have hope in God. Let us remember that God will come back for us. But until that day, we have a job to do. A wonderful job, an amazing job, a job worth everything. So friends, I pray you go from here excited for the Advent season, excited for Christmas and ready, ready to get to work. As we enter into this time of Holy Communion, I invite you to join me in prayer. Lord God, we recognize that we've not always loved you with our whole hearts, that we've made mistakes, that we've not loved each other as we ought to. So Lord, we pray for forgiveness this day. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us. And that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah and amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed in us in your image 
and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall lift not when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who t- fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send empty away. Your son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross by the baptism of his back the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood and new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in you, Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathering here, now on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast as heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. At this time, I invite the communion servant to come forward. Because there's one loaf, we who are many are one. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the lifeblood of Jesus Christ. I met this church. We practice open communion. That means there's no barriers between you and this, the Lord's table, except for the ones you've erected yourself.
the Lord invites all who love him, who wish to know him better, to come participate at the Lord's table. And this time I invite you to come forward as the Spirit leads.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise your able body and spirit for our closing hymn, number 202, People Look East. I forgot to make this announcement at the beginning of service, but if you're on the ad board, uh, we'll be having a quick meeting right after Sunday school today. So if you're on the ad board, just stick around after Sunday school for a quick meeting. If you're not able to make it to Sunday school, just talk to me and I'll let you in on what's going on. Nothing major. Until then, I pray you all go from here and have a wonderful Sabbath. Until we see each other again, I invite you to receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. I pray for you this, that God may give you peace. Amen.